All right, so the last piece of this series is I'm going to end up creating a teacher uh, class. And the idea, again, is that <clears throat> the teacher is going to inherit from the person, but the teacher has unique qualities that make the teacher different from the student. So let's just get, uh, I'm going to put this below the student class. I'm going to make a class teacher and open and close curly braces. Uh, semicolon and uh, we'll do something simple like uh, we'll do a private member and this teacher the make it different teaches from a department so we'll say department uh, we'll make that a string string department so for example I'm a teacher in the CIS department all right <clears throat> and then public and we're gonna need a public constructor constructors are always public and let's see, so first of all, we know that we're gonna need a string department, string and the department and PT, okay. And then I'm going to set the department. So I'm gonna set the private member department equal to what was received in the constructor. And then just like before, if we're going to say that this is a class that's gonna inherit from parent, uh, from the uh, person class, we need to include or inherit from person. And then just like we did here, we had to make sure that the person got instantiated with the appropriate things that it needed. And so I'm just gonna copy and paste what we've done earlier. So that was a review, hopefully from the last video. And let's see, so let me just go ahead and build at this point in time to make sure I built my class correctly. First of all, this is the department, EPT. So whatever got put in here goes in here. And then I forgot the semicolon, so let's try that now. All right, so I'm building properly, so that seems good. All right, so I'm gonna add another piece to this puzzle. Everything's the same, right? It, the teacher still has access to everything of the person, but the teacher doesn't have access to anything of the student because they are siblings and they don't inherit from each other. They only inherit from the person. All right, so that all is, is sort of a review from the last video, but I'm gonna to add to this one other thought process. I'm gonna create a two string in my person. And the idea behind a two string is that it enables us to print out the properties of the class that we are interested in. So if we wanna print out what is, a, what is contained in the person object, then that's usually what the, that's kind of the idea behind a two string. And so I'm going to just copy and paste in some code because that makes it easier for me to demonstrate. Okay, so what I've done here is um, I've added this, this two string, which is not the same as this two string. And the reason I've done it, let me just get rid of it so you can see why I, where my thought process. So let's just start here. So my idea here is that I wanted to return what whoever called the two string method of my person class is going to get back the ID and which was the social security number. And then I used this, I just called a function within itself. I can do that. So I called my own get full name function that returns first and last name. So I don't have to replicate the concatenation of all of that. And then I return the resulting string. So let me see if that compiles and I don't think it's going to, which is what I just erased. And it did, which is odd. It shouldn't have. So let's see what happens. Okay, so far so good. So I'm just gonna keep walking because I feel like that should have gotten an error. So if it's not gonna get an error, it's not something I need to address. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that that is printing or not printing because again, I feel like I should have gotten an error. So we created a student. So by definition then, or we let's create a teacher. Actually, I'm gonna continue on with the student because I don't understand why that didn't give me an error. I hate when I'm expecting one and I don't get one. So I'm gonna to try to type out student. Uh, let's do a C out uh, student. And then I'm gonna call the two string method and see what happens. All right, so now I'm going to try and run this and it compiled and yeah, okay, so I got this weird little thing here. So it didn't give me an error, but it didn't do what I wanted it to. And so here's what's going on. Let me, all right. So person ID without giving me an error, and I thought it was going to give me an error, is a integer. 
and I'm trying to concatenate an integer with a string, and I'm getting an odd result back. You can't do that. It, the, the compiler is confused and didn't even get in an error. It's so confused it didn't even give you an error. Just print it out gobbledygook. And so the idea that I'm getting at here is a plus sign can mean two things, right? It can either mean add two numbers together, in other words, add an integer to an integer, or join two things together, strings and a string. So the compiler doesn't know how do I add do or do I join, and these are two different data types, so it doesn't know what to do with it. And so what I did was uh, I used this toString method, which is a method of the string class, which means that if I use if I use toString, which means I need to include string up here, so I need to add that. So include the string class. Include the string class. In the string class, there is a function called toString, which will convert this, if it can, to a string, which it can convert a number to a string, and then join those together instead of trying to add them together as a math problem. So let's see if that fixed that error. All right, and so let me build it and see if it fixes that error, because so far, not so good. Okay, so now I'm getting back a number. So that is it, it, that was intended there. All right, learning opportunities. All right, so now we're successfully joining a string, which was an integer, to a string, and we've got this toString method. So that seems pretty good. And what I wanted to elaborate with this, where I was really ideally going, was that student then, or I was gonna get working on the teacher, same with the student, but the teacher might also have a toString method. So I'm gonna do a string, uh, toString, toString, and I wanna return, let's see, what do I think about what I return? Well, ideally, as a teacher, I would like to return this information and then on top of that, I would like to return this information, or excuse me, the department, because it is a person. So ideally then I would like to, if someone calls the teacher's two string method, I would like this method to call the person's two string method or whatever method, it doesn't matter, but I'm just using this as an example. You can do whatever method you want. And other the point is as a child of the person, I would like to be able to access from my method here, like I can't just type in two string. That doesn't make any sense because the compiler is going to be looking for a two string here. It's going to see itself and it's just going to keep calling itself over and over again. And so here's what we're going to do. Um, person two string returns a string and it returns this result. So I'm going to create a string and I'll call it result equals. And in order to call the person's string, you need the word person, so the name of the parent, similar to what we did up here. And then we use two colons, which is the way for us to see how we're getting that pop-up. That's enabling us to get to whatever is within the person's public information. And so I want to get at the two string. So I'm just gonna click on two string because it's here, it makes it easy. So it also, inherently is not just going to call the person, but it's going to call my my person's, this particular teacher's person's information. And so it'll be smart enough to pull, just like we've seen before, it'll be pulling this teacher's first name, last name, and social security number, putting it into this result, returning it, and putting it here in our string. And so on top of our returned information from the parent, then we can also do... Um, result, well, let's just add it on the end of here. So we can do plus, whatever gets returned there, plus we want to return our year information, right? So I'm gonna do, um, we'll do year, and then something like that, plus year. So now we're appending onto what we're getting back from the person's two string, information that's particular to the teacher's, oh, teacher isn't string, I keep looking at the wrong one, teacher's department, isn't it? So that would have been a good good two-string method for the student. Sorry, I hope that was not as confusing as it was for me. Um, department, D-E-P-T, okay. And so then we're gonna return result 
And now if we print out, let's go ahead and create a teacher. I don't even think we've done that yet. All right, I'm going to comment out all of our student stuff then. And let's create a teacher. Teacher, teacher. And we have to send over information. Well, the teacher is, let's see, what it was the order department? CIS, first name, Kirsten, last name, Markley. Uh, Social Security is... Let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, we'll make something up, of course. Social Security number is 444-555. And then, um, so we've got the department. I'm just looking here at what I need. I need to send the department. I need to send the first name. I need to send the last name. I need to send the Social Security. The first and the last and the Social Security are going to go up to the person. And then the department is going to be set here within this teacher class. All right, so now I should be good there. And then I think the final part is I'm going to print out the teacher's two string. So let's try that. So C out, E-N-D-L, just to make it clean, teacher dot two string. And let's just be clear, teacher two string. Let me make sure that I'm making sense here, two string. And so let's see what gets printed out because we have two different two strings, don't we? So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. And we get an error. So I'm missing a parentheses somewhere. So, oh, I have an extra comma here. Okay, let's try that. All right, and so a person is born and then I'm getting, as you can see, I've got, let's just make sure that, let me, let me bring out, I wish I had the forethought to do this a little differently before I did it, but there we go. Okay, so let's see. I'm just going to look at the code and make sure I'm getting what I expected. So when it ran the two string, it ran, uh, let's see, I'm in the person's two string and it said two string person ID. So it did give me the ID of the teacher. And it did give me the colon, and then it got the full name, so it came up here and got the full name, because that's what's being printed here. And then it went into, so that's what was called right here with the person colon colon two string. So the person's two string method got called, and then we got the department and department. So, and that is in fact what we got. So in essence, we, overrode we if you're calling the teachers two string it's saying this is a little bit more um, specific than the oh, so I could pull this over here then the person's two string so since two string there's two two strings two two strings t o t w o two strings the one that was most specific which was the teachers two string is the one that got run the teacher's two string called the parent's two string, which ran, and then it had we appended our own teacher information onto it. So let's just finish this example. I'll copy this information for the, let's create a two string for our student. It also is gonna call the person's two string, but the thing that's specific to the student is that it's a year, right? And so now if we come back in here and I'll just copy and paste some of this, we'll create that student again. And student, and then we'll call the students two string, two string. And then we should get just that student's information. So uh, we have to do a C out. I'll do another ENDL. And so now we should get both of those. So let's see what happens. And sure enough, so now we've got the teacher's information and we've got the student's information. I'm still getting all that person's born stuff, so maybe that's a little confusing. So just to finish this off, I'm going to get rid of all of the you were born announcements. I think we get the idea there. And then you were born announcement. There we go. We don't need to announce that we're born anymore. We get the idea. And so the last piece of that is that a person is still being born. So somehow I didn't, and this happens, it doesn't actually build. So we're gonna rebuild everything. <clears throat> We've seen that happen once or twice. And now we're getting just that information. So we're getting the two string for the teacher. We're getting the two string for the 
student, but each of those are inheriting or accessing a single two string from the parent. And that's handy because if our person, we need to change something in our person, uh, we can change that here. Maybe we don't want to give them access to ID anymore. Maybe we say, you know what, that's being abused. Maybe we'll just give them access to full name. All right, so now because we're in control of what gets delivered, let's see what happens. And so now we've eliminated that on both of the inherited classes. So that's inheritance.